Hello everyone! In this video, I'll show you how to use the very powerful XY wing pattern to help eliminate candidates and ultimately help you to solve harder level Sudoku puzzles. So what is the XY wing, sometimes just called a Y wing? Well, the best way to explain it is to show you. First a definition and then we'll take a look at a couple of examples. This definition I pulled up by googling for it. An XY wing is a group of three cells, one sharing a unit with the other two, each having only two candidates. The two cells that share a unit with the first are called the wings. Each of the wings must share one candidate with the first cell, and it doesn't say it here, but that cell we call the pivot cell, but of different values. So let's take a look at this example. I came across this while solving a puzzle for my Solve With Me series. Here you can see I got to this point and then I was stuck until I noticed this XY wing. So let's have a look. The boxes that are colored in green form what is called an XY wing. Some people call it simply a Y wing and in fact, it looks more like a Y than an X. So the green colored cells are the group of three cells mentioned in the Google definition. And then we have one sharing a unit with the other two, each having only two candidates. So here we have this cell. It has two candidates, a three and a six. This three six is called the pivot cell and it shares the same row with this cell and the same column with this cell. These two cells are called the wings and each wing must share one candidate with the pivot cell, but of different values. Some people label one wing X and one wing Y, and that's how it gets the name XY wings. It doesn't matter which wing is the X or the Y. So this cell, which is in the same row as the pivot cell, has a three and an eight as its two candidates, so it shares a three with the pivot cell. And this cell, which is in the same column as the pivot cell, has a six and an eight as its two candidates, so it shares a six with the pivot cell. Great, so now what? Well, the logic is similar to the logic we use with X-wings and even with swordfishes. This pivot cell must be either a three or a six. If it's a three, then this cell is an eight, but if it's a six, then this cell is an eight. Either way, whether this cell is a three or a six, one of the wings has to be an eight. Good so far? So if one of these wing cells is an eight, then any cell that sees both cells cannot be an eight. Cells that see each other are also called peer cells because they share a common row, column, or block. So let's see if we have any peer cells cells that are in both the same row and the same column or block as the two wing cells. And yes, these two cells are in the same column as this 3-8 wing cell, and they're also in the same block as this 6-8 wing cell, so they are peer cells to the two wing cells. Now, since one of those wing cells has to be an 8, we don't know which yet since we don't know if the pivot cell is a three or a six, but it doesn't matter. One of these wing cells has to be an eight, which means that any eights in the peer cells can be eliminated. And we have an eight here, so this eight can be eliminated. If this wing cell is an eight, then it's in the same column, so it can't be an eight. And if this wing cell is the eight, then it's in the same block, so either way, the eight from this cell can be eliminated. And once we eliminate the eight, we have a naked single, the three. And then the whole puzzle unraveled after that. You can see me solve the puzzle from beginning to end in episode 15 of my Solve With Me series. How about another example? Here is the pivot cell, the one seven in the top row. And here are the XY wing cells. In the same block, we have a seven, eight. So this wing cell shares a seven with the pivot cell. And in the same row, we have a one, eight wing cell. So this shares a one with the pivot cell. This is a little different from the previous example. 
where that one had the pivot cells sharing the same row and column as the wings. In this example, the pivot cell shares the same row and block as the wings. The logic is the same as before. If this pivot cell is a 1, then this wing will be an 8. But if this pivot cell is a 7, then this wing will be an 8. Either way, one of the wings is an 8. Good so far? If you need to, please rewind and try following the logic more closely. Once you understand the logic, it should make sense. So now, if one of these cells has to be an 8, then any cell that sees both wing cells cannot be an 8. That means any 8s in peer cells can be eliminated. So we're looking for peer cells that are both in the same row and block as the two wings. This cell with 158 is in both the same row as one of the wings and in the same block as the other wing, so it's considered a peer cell. And this cell here with the 18, it's in the same block as one wing and in the same row as the other wing, so it's also a peer cell. What about this cell, also a 158? No, it doesn't see both wings. It sees this wing, since it's in the same block, but it doesn't see this one, so it's not a peer cell. So the 8s can be eliminated from these two cells, and now we have a naked single here, the 1. This helps to break apart the whole puzzle, because once that 1 is placed, it resolves this one 8, so this is now an 8, and then this 6, 8 in the same column is resolved, and so on. How about one more example? Let's take a look at this grid. Can you spot the x, y wing? I'll give you a hint. It's in these two rows. Do you see it? These three cells make up the x, y wing. Now pause this video and think about which is the pivot cell and which are the wings. Think about it. Did you figure it out? This cell with the 4, 9 is the pivot cell. It shares a 9 with this cell, which is in the same row, and it shares a 4 with this cell, which is in the same block. So these two cells are the wings. Now, think about it. Which number can now be eliminated? And from which cell or cells? Pause this video if you want to think some more. Okay, so which number can be eliminated? The 6, right? Whether the pivot cell is a 4 or a 9, it can be either, but either way, one of the wings would then have to be a 6, right? And if one of the wings is a 6, then the 6 can be eliminated from any other cells that see both wings. Okay, next question. Which cells see both wings? There's only one cell that sees both wings, and that's this one. It's in the same row as this wing, and in the same block as this wing. So the six can be eliminated from this cell, which leaves a naked single here, the five. So now you have another tool to use when you get stuck. Remember, this technique is similar to the X-Wing and even the Swordfish, which is an extension of the X-Wing. So try to look for these patterns. I hope this helps you the next time you're solving a very hard Sudoku puzzle. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.